Well, this is the GB for USD daily chart on the right side of the screen and the three day confirmation chart on the left side of the screen. Um, and I've been looking at some setups on longer term time frames. And what I'm seeing is that my strategy does keep me out of some bad trades. It also keeps me out of some good trades, as all strategies do. But what I'm really liking is that sometimes they, everything aligns at the trade time, at the setup time. Sometimes you have to wait a couple of bars. Now, if it's a daily chart, that means you're going to be waiting a couple of days. If it's a 15-minute chart, you're going to be waiting 30 minutes. But we're waiting for all the energies to align before we take the entry to try and fine tune our entry. And this is a good example. So the area I want to concentrate on is this area down here on the, uh, on the pound daily chart. Just this area here. And in particular, I want to look in detail at these two DP trades. So as I'm running through my checklist, the first thing I'm going to note is that we're actually trading a DP trade. That's a, a reversal trade. Both of these trades, in fact, were reversal trades. And basically that means that we're trading against the trend. As you can see, the trend on this daily chart is down, and the trend on the three-day chart is down. So with the DP trade, with the reversal trade, we know we're trading against the trend, and therefore we know that it's higher risk. But that generally means also higher reward if the trade works out in our favor. The second thing I'm particularly interested in with DP trades is it needs to be at the end of an extended trend, shall we say. In other words, I want to see lots of swings down to the DP or up to the DP. In this case here, it would be up to the DP up here. But in this, the, the trade we're looking at, we want to see lots of swings down because what we're seeing is this is a reversal trade and we're not expecting the trend to reverse immediately after it started. So the more swings there are, the better. Generally, when I'm going to do the swing count, I'm going to go back as far as the last major high and do a swing count from there. So in that case, we're going to start up here, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's certainly in excess of 11 swings, whether we count this as two swings here or not. Um, so plenty of swings there to qualify this as a reversal trade. The next thing I'm going to be looking for is some divergence on momentum to show me that the DP is likely taking place at the end of a, a five-wave pattern, effectively. And the best indicator for that is divergence on momentum. So if we look at this chart here, we can see from this point to this point, the price makes a lower low. But on momentum, the price makes a higher low. Not a very good line there, but the price made a higher Also, if we go to the higher time frame chart, we can see that as well as on the setup time frame, we've got divergence on the higher time frame as well. So that's what we like to see. And in fact, it's not what we like to see. It's a necessary requirement in my book for any reversal trade. The more clear the divergence is, the better. So the next thing I'm going to look for is where is the DP setting up in relation to the previous up wave. So the first thing I'm going to look for is an expansion. So now we're beginning to look at where we are in terms of Fibonacci levels. So if you look at the chart in the middle here, we're on a weekly chart here, and I've gone back 10 years, believe it or not. Uh, don't do that every time, but I wanted to demonstrate. You can see here the pound is in a 1, 2, wave 3, messy wave 4, and we're looking for it to make a new low beyond this low here for wave 5. But the important thing is that at the minute, if you look in this area here, what we've got is we've got an A, B equals C, D at 7, 8, 6. And the price action is kind of sideways-ish around the 786 level. So it's been holding around here for two or three weeks now. 
and uh, eventually all these are going to go move up and move down. But it's at the round about the 786 level. So back to my daily chart, and I'm going to uh, put a fib expansion on the previous upswing. So I'm going to click here, click there, fib expansion. And if I click the 1272 on there, <coughs> we can see that the price in the area that we're interested, where the DP was setting up, is in between the 1272, 1618. So that, for us, is a nice correction area. Happy with that. And then I'm going to put a fib level on the CD leg. Now, in this point, at this point, I have two choices. Either I can try and do it on this one, or I can go down to a lower time frame to see more clearly where I'm at. Um, now, you'll notice that I'm, I haven't mentioned this trade, which was uh, previously set up. I'm going to look at that in a minute when we look at momentum. Because both of these trades, this one and this one, you know, they're both in the same area, and all the analysis I've done so far applies to each of them. Now I'm going to check the fib expansion of the last AB equals CD. Sorry, fib extension, not expansion. So AB equals CD, and you can see there if I just hold the cursor over it. It's in between the 618786. That's my favorite zone. I love the 618786 zone. Now you'll see I've now introduced a 135 minute chart. It doesn't have to be 135 minutes, but I like to go down to a smaller time frame to help me with my swing count. Now here was my A, B, C, D. And what I'm interested in now is the CD leg, I want to see an impulsive swing count. Now, this is the C point on the smaller time frame. And this is the D point here. Ignore that DP down there. That's not relevant to us at the minute. I mean, it's comforting to see another DP set up, but it's not what we're looking at, not what we're working on at the minute. So if I go down and do my count, one, two, sorry, this one out. One, two, let me clear that off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen swings to the DP. That is a, an impulsive swing count, and therefore I'm happy with my swing count, and I've used the smaller time frame purely to do that swing count. So I've now zoomed us in because we've everything complies with what we're looking for. We're now interested in timing our entry. And for that, what we really want is the on the lower time frame, the trigger time frame, which is this chart here, we want a KD cross. You can see down in this area here we have got the KD cross. In that area there. The little blue line also tells me that we've got divergence. In other words, what we've got is what we refer to as the kick there. That's what we're looking for. We want to see divergence on one time frame or the other. And so we've got KD cross. We want momentum to be in our favor, which you can see it is. Uh, that's in this area here. If I hold the crosshair over it, you'll see that. At the point of the DP, now the point of the first DP, momentum is down. We don't want to take a long trade when momentum is down on this time frame and the next time frame. If you look across to the higher time frame, you'll also see where my crosshair is linked across here that we've got momentum down on this setup there on both time frames. So we wouldn't take that setup. We would do all the analysis we've done so far. But we won't take it until we get momentum with us, with us the direction of the trade. So move to the next bar, it's still down on both time frames. The next bar, it's still down on both time frames. And then, of course, the next bar takes out the low of that first trade. So that first trade is negated, and we've been kept out of that 
by waiting for the momentum in particular on the higher time frame to be in our favour. And that's important. Sometimes you get frustrated when you're watching a trade, you've got to set up, you want to go, you want to go, you want to go, and you feel kind of like the greyhound in the trap because momentum's still against you. Well, you want to wait. We want higher time frame momentum with us. So if you look at where my cursor is now, we're on the setup time frame where the DP is. We've got everything we want in our favour on that chart. Absolutely everything. We've got all our swing counts, our fib levels, our extensions. Everything is where we want it to be, including we've got the divergence on the cycle indicator and we've got momentum in our favour. But if you look across at the higher time frame chart, our confirmation chart, we still got momentum down and we don't know what was going to happen. We do now because we've seen what's happened since. But at the point at the hard right edge of the screen, we didn't know what was going to happen. And the cycle indicator are both still pointing down. C, uh, cycle K and D are still both pointing down. So we've got to wait. We've got to wait for those to come in our favour. So if we move one more bar along, now obviously on this chart, that's another day. But look where we got now. At this point, We've now got the divergence on the cycle indicator on the setup time frame. We've got momentum in our favour on the setup time frame. We've got momentum in our favour on the higher time frame. And we've got cycle indicator K has crossed D and is in the direction of trade. Now we want to go. So that's the point we know we can go. So now we've got our uh, trade set up. You can see the return potentially is 7.2, but we're going to look at that in a minute. And you can also see that the bar we were able to, to get filled on, or the bar that we got our, our go signal on, was this bar here. Now, that is obviously above the fill level of the, of the M3 predictor fill. So if we say, well, look here, that's where it is, we now have two choices. Either we can be filled at the top of the bar that gave us the go, or we can say, no, I still want to be filled if you come back and touch this level. That's a choice for us to make. In this case, it would have worked both ways. The only difference is, if you'd said, go place your order, and I want to be filled at the original level, then you would have got filled, because as you can see, this bar came down and broke through it. If you said you want to be filled at the top of the, the, the go bar, then you would have still been filled. You just reduced your potential reward, that's all, and obviously the size of your trade. Because if we move this up to the top of that bar, you can see that we reduce our mini our size. Well, in this case, you don't because it's one mini long. But you get the point that we've reduced the risk reward to four, the reward to risk to 4.1. So uh, let's leave it there for a minute. So we check to make sure that obviously that is acceptable level of reward. And, uh, and at that point, we enter the trade one way or the other, whichever way we choose. Now, some of these, uh, you can see this M3 predictor target here is based on the decision point of this previous wave high. Now, for my liking, I prefer to have my target nearer. Uh, it's all very well and very nice if it goes up to that 6.3 level, but of course, uh, at the very least for me, I want to be taking some off at the 618 level. So I'm going to put the 61, the fib level on there, and I'm going to. So, sorry. so I'm going to put the 618 level on, uh, on there. You can see the green dotted line. That's a 618 of this downswing. And two things I'm going to do with this. I'm going to put my initial alarm there to tell me if the price is getting up to there. And at that point, I can check my indicators in particular and see where we're at. And give me the choice of either taking the whole trade off or taking some off and leaving some on to see if it'll run to the target. But for me, 618 is the first level rather than this level up here. As I said, it's very nice if it gets there, but not necessarily guaranteed to do so. So now I've entered the trade, what I'm really interested in is I'm going to use the higher time frame, which is the chart on the left, to guide me as this price makes, uh, as it price makes a move up. And you know, because obviously on the cycle of that time frame, it's going to take longer. This uh, this lower time frame can do one or two or three cycles within the space of that three-day chart doing one cycle. But the thing is, here's the thing. 
uh, we can see if you if we follow this trend up, yes, it went very nicely, then it started to go sideways a bit. Sideways a little, sideways a little. But now we can see that we're at the top of the cycle on the shorter term time frame. And more importantly, we've now got a divergence with the trend because the trend on this chart is down. The trend is down. So here we've got a downtrend and we've got a divergence with that trend. And we know that they are more powerful than divergences against the trend. So that's a great warning sign to me to, to get out, basically. I mean, bear in mind that we this is somewhere where we would be looking to go short using the cycle indicator. Um, so this is an alarm, if you like. Treat it as an alarm. And then if I move on and come to here, you can see what happened eventually was the momentum turned down, so you definitely wanted to be out there anyhow. So for me, here, the 618 level, you know, you know you're going to get a bit of resistance at this 55 EMA anyhow. And it's in con confluence with the 618. So you know you're going to get some sideways action there, if nothing else. So for me, that's the place where our target would have been. 3R and hits it nicely and then comes back down here. Now by taking it all off there, really all we've done is we've, we've saved ourselves enduring the pain of watching this go down, watch it come up, watch it go down, watch it come up, who knows where it's going to go. So for me, 618, that's where I want to be taken. Certainly some, if not all, and generally speaking, I'd take all. If I can make 3R on a nice clean trade like that, you know, the thing is, you know that this is not going to carry on up in this direction all the way. You know you're going to get sideways chop wherever you get it. So for me, I like to be in and out. And bear in mind, we're against the trend. So here, when the when the price breaks through this level, this 100% level, for me again, put your stop to break even. Now that's a personal decision. Sometimes you'll be stopped out because you do that. Sometimes you won't. But for me. DP trades, they're very high risk, and so I like to get my stop to break even as soon as possible. If you're a bit more risk tolerant, that's fine. Leave it where it was. But, you know, for me, at least when the price breaks here, then you would be putting your stop to break even. That way you're in a risk-free trade, and trust me, risk-free trades are very, very nice places to be. You know, the worst case scenario is you don't make any money. The beautiful scenario is you don't lose any money. And yeah, so for me, get in and make it risk free. So that's, that's it. I hope that you saw there the beauty here in particular of waiting for what I call all the energies to be aligned because it kept us out of that one and it got us into this one slightly later than, than, than the original setup. But you know, these things go wrong more often than not, these DPs. We really, really, really want momentum in the higher time frame on our side, and it makes a massive difference. Uh, I've proved that to myself in back testing, and you know, that's what I'm always looking for. So, hope you've uh, enjoyed the video, and hope it's useful to you, and encourages you to uh, do some testing yourself and find those kind of setups to give you confidence in taking them in a real time through. Bye for now.